Kajoro. We have defended the honor of our planet, battled villains throughout the universe, and dabbled in photography. What more can we achieve? Okay, that's close enough. You can Invading our private fortress? Kajoro, no! We need the answers! Wait! Come back! Now what's everybody looking at? Nothing! <laughs> well, I'm not sure that cartoon would fly anymore. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're not talking about the superheroes, Ace and Gary, but we are taking a look at a tool brand that sounds like it's a superhero, and that's Alloy Man Tools. So let's take a look at some of their newest tools and see if they're any good. So a month or two ago, I did a video on this tool brand and it got a fairly good reception. So I thought I'd dig a little deeper and check out some of their other tools. In that first video, I covered these three tools. Now the first tool is the Alloy Man Buffer, Polisher, and Sander. Now this is typically used for cars, but it does have a purpose in the wood shop. The second tool is the Alloy Man Digital Tape Measure. And lastly, we have the Alloy Man Cordless Impact Wrench. In case you haven't seen that video, let me quickly rehash some of my observations from reviewing each one of those tools. First off is the Car Buffer Polisher and Sander. Now as you can see here, this thing came loaded with accessories. It came with polishing pads, it came with three sponges, and it even came with some sanding discs. A lot of stuff. But even more important than that, this thing is versatile. This thing not only comes with a 6 inch pad, but it also comes with a 7 inch pad for your larger projects. Now how do I anticipate using a car polisher, buffer, and sander in woodworking? Well let's talk about it. First and foremost is obviously sanding. Now I don't have any sanders that have a 7 inch pad, so this will make sanding some of my larger projects just a little bit easier. The second thing is for polishing and rubbing out lacquer. Now if you've ever tried to do this by hand, you know it takes a considerable amount of time. Rubbed out. But at today's price at just under $48, it's really hard to find a 7 inch disc sander. The next tool I took a look at is a tool that I won't necessarily use for woodworking all the time, but it is nice to have around the house. And this tool is the 20 volt Alloy Man Impact Wrench. This guy's a big dog. A big dog. Now I had never used an impact wrench before I got this tool, and this thing is essentially a beefy impact driver. Beefy! And I used this tool to easily remove and replace all 20 lug nuts on my truck. Now this thing is obviously cordless, and this tool uses a battery that's completely compatible with the Makita battery infrastructure. Which is great because not only can you use a Makita battery with this tool, but you can also purchase these cheaper Alloy Man batteries for all of your Makita tools. The last thing that I took a look at in that video was the Alloy Man 16 foot digital tape measure. And this tape measure has all the bells and whistles that you see with many more expensive digital tape measures. And it even has some additional features like having a magnetic hook, the ability to calculate area and volume on board the tape measure, as well as having Bluetooth connectivity. And overall, I was very pleased with each one of these tools, especially at this price point. And that's why we're going to take a look at these three new tools today. The price is right. And each one of these tools today are 100% woodworking tools. So let's get into it. So our first tool of the day is the Alloy Man 5-inch Orbital Sander. Let's check this out and see if it's any good. So right out of the box, you're going to get the instruction manual as well as 25 sandpapers. And this includes 80, 120, 180, and 240. Along with that, you'll get the sander itself. Let's take a closer look at that sander and check out some of its controls. So obviously this sander is a corded model. If we look on the very side, you can see there's a rotating dial that allows you to adjust the speed from 1 all the way up to 6. If we look at the very front of the sander, you can see the on and off switch. Now one thing I noticed that's a little bit different about this sander is the dust collection. In fact, this reminds me a lot of the Bosch sander. And that's because this dust collector is made out of plastic so that you can see exactly how much sawdust is in that container. And if we open up that dust collector, you can actually see there's a filter before it hits the air. But frankly, I don't care about those dust collectors as I hook up all my hand sanders to vacuums. And if you're like me, it's important to have a sander that will automatically attach to a Festool hose. He's a dandy. He's a real fancy boy. <laughs> and surprisingly, the Festool hose fits easily into place. Which is awesome because my Ryobi and my DeWalt don't offer that same luxury. 
which is 100% of the reason why I reach for a Festool sander before I reach for my Ryobi or my DeWalt. Having the ability to attach to a Festool dust collector means that this tool will actually get used, at least more often. Since we have that Ryobi out, you can see how the size and the shape of the Alloy Man is very similar. Which is great because I'm very familiar with the Ryobi feel for sanders, and that tool has probably had the most man hours behind it more than any other tool in my shop. Now obviously it's going to be very difficult to do a scientific test on this tool, but I will do a subjective test and give you an idea of how this compares to the Ryobi sander. So here I've got a scrap piece of plywood that I've marked up quite a bit, so I'm going to spend a couple of minutes with that alloy man and see how it compares to the Ryobi. So in getting ready to plug this thing in, I'm already a happy man. Let me show you something. This alloy man sander is rocking a 10 foot cord versus the Ryobi at six feet. That is huge. And yes, I used the alloy man tape measure to measure that. Now let's do some sanding. What a sellout. Well, that was a pretty interesting test, actually. You may have noticed there at the very end, I was moving back and forth between the Alloy Man and the Ryobi and even running both at the same time. And that's because I wanted to get a feel for both right at the same time. Let me tell you about some of my observations. First off, the balance on this Alloy Man is perfect. This thing sits completely flat against your workpiece and is very easy to handle. The second thing is vibration. Now initially when using this tool, I thought the vibration was pretty good and that's why I wanted to fire up the Ryobi. And once I compared it to the Ryobi, you could tell that there was a little bit more vibration with the Alloy Man. And that little bit of vibration wasn't significant, but it was there, so I did want to share it with you. The other thing that I had forgotten about with the Ryobi is it doesn't have variable speed and the Alloy Man does, which is a nice feature to have. But beyond all that, let's talk about price. Now, Ryobi is a bargain brand, and you can get that sander for about $69, and this Alloy Man is under $30. And for under $30, with the compatibility with the Festool dust collection and the variable speed, this thing is a bargain in my book. Just make sure that extra vibration doesn't get to you. It vibrates. Well, that covers our first new Alloy Man tool of the day. Before we move on to our second, I ask you to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button and leave a like. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Only about 9% of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, just like with all my videos, I'm gonna leave links in the description below so if any of these tools interest you, you can go check them out for yourself. Now let's go check out our second Alloy Man tool. So our next tool of the day is the Alloy Man Palm Router. Let's check this out and see what it comes with. So inside the box, you'll get the router itself along with the instructions manual. You'll also get a couple of rail guides and for some reason, Chinese companies always like to include gloves. <laughs> you'll also get some safety goggles, a couple of wrenches, a dust collection chute, 15 router bits, as well as some hardware. Now, one of the first things that you're probably thinking is this thing looks a lot like my favorite router, the DeWalt router. And they do look quite similar. They're both yellow, they're both variable speed, and they're both adjustable. But the DeWalt router is quite a bit more beefy, stands a little bit taller, and has a wider base. But we're here to talk about that Alloy Man, so let's start to talk about the accessories. First off, it's a really nice added bonus that this comes with 15 router bits. Now, I would say these are mid-level to low-end router bits. I love Chinese crab. It's also really nice that it comes with a dust collection chute. You'll also notice that there's a couple of items here that allow you to adjust the collet from a quarter inch to a half inch. And this is where I begin to become concerned. This Alloy Man collet is very similar to the collet that's on some of the old Ryobis. This is the same router that I had a couple of router bits fly off the router and almost cause damage. If we look at the dust collection chute, this easily attaches to the router and is screwed into place with a little knob on the side. Now the dust collection chute is not compatible with the Festool system, but that's just a personal preference of mine. That's fancy, that's fancy. Now I already mentioned that the collet with this tool concerns me quite a bit, but there's another feature of this tool that concerns me just as much. And this has to do with the locking mechanism as well as the adjustability of the tool. As you can see, there's a nice rack and pinion system that allows you to move the router up and down. And once you have it to your desired setting, you can lock it down with this latch. I did say lock it down, right? That's what I heard. 
Well, this is a major problem with this tool. Once it's locked into place, you can easily slide that router wherever you want. Now there is a little locking mechanism on the inside of the latch that allows you to increase the tension of the locking mechanism. And I did tighten this down and it does seem to hold in place once that's tightened up. However, there's no tool that comes with this router that allows you to lock it tighter. So there is a workaround there, but right out of the box, you can absolutely not use this tool. But now that I have the locking mechanism fixed so that it clamps down, I'm gonna put one of the included chamfer bits into the router and we'll test to see how it cuts. So the router does indeed work, but I just can't get over the collet system as well as the fact that I had to adjust the locking mechanism right out of the box. Those are two safety issues that I just can't overlook with this Alloy Man router. In my opinion, you're better suited to save up for the DeWalt as you won't be disappointed with this one. And for that reason, I'm not going to dig into this Alloy Man router any further as I'm concerned about your safety as well as mine. Now there's junk and there's junk. So we've got one winner and one dud so far. Let's move on to our next tool and see if we can get another winner. So our next tool is the 20 volt cordless reciprocating saw. Let's check this one out. So inside the box, you're going to see the tool itself along with the instruction manual. This tool also comes with a battery charger as well as two batteries. It also comes with six different types of blades as well as some goggles. Lastly, it comes with another set of gloves. Maybe somebody should tell these Chinese companies that gloves really aren't necessary. So just like with the impact wrench, the batteries for this tool are completely compatible with the Makita infrastructure. And it's really nice that this tool comes out of the box with two batteries. If we look at the blades that are included with this tool, you can see it comes with a short metal blade as well as a long metal blade. It also comes with two short wood blades as well as two long wood blades. Now that we've taken a look at all the accessories that come with this tool, let's take a look at its physical structure. What was he doing with that thing in his hand? If we take a look at the tool, you can see it has a very comfortable pistol grip. Up at the top is a lock that prevents the tool from being operated. If we take a look at the base of the tool, you can actually see a battery readout that shows the battery level when the tool is in operation. Operating this tool is very similar to any other reciprocating saw. I'm thinking a reciprocating meat saw. Let me show you how to load the blades. If we look at one of the blades that came with the tool, you can see it has the exact same layout as any other blade you can get at a big box store. To load the blade, you simply slide the notch to the side, insert the blade, and release the notch. Once that notch is released, the blade is locked into place and you're ready to start cutting. And obviously, I won't be able to do a scientific test here, but I will cut through a 2x4 and some hardwood and see how it feels. So here goes the 2x4. Next up, let's try some hardwood. In this case, I've got some oak flooring. And that cut like butter, both for the hardwood as well as the pine. In fact, I noticed very little difference between the two. So I've only had experience with one other reciprocating saw in my life, and that's the Ryobi saw. And this thing feels and cuts just as good as that Ryobi. So what's the price on this bad boy? Well, it's a little bit more expensive at just under $90, which is about the same price you'll pay with many other reciprocating saws, but that's for the tool only. And I need to remind you that this tool comes with not only one battery, but two batteries. And that alone makes this tool a complete winner in my book. Don't forget gloves. Did I mention the free gloves? Well, I really appreciate you joining me on checking out these three new Alloy Man brands. I know not every single one was a winner, but that's what you get when you check out some of these bargain brands. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.